Here I'm going to be reviewing the Havit HVHB346L RGB backlit keyboard. Uh, first I'm going to do a, a review of the keyboard itself, some of the features it has, and the quality. And then I'm going to go into the actual software and show you how to use that briefly to set up the keyboard and really how thorough the software is. The keyboard has four backlit areas and it also has, I guess what you could call a fifth one, which is the actual logo for the keyboard. Uh, the four areas are divided up into these, where it's red here, then green, then purple, and then lastly this side's green right now, but it can be changed. Uh, so four different areas, and then the logo itself can be changed to many different colors and intensities. Uh, it has 13 programmable macro keys, and four of them are here with G1, G2, G3, G4, and then up here with L5, 4, 3, 2, 1, L6, L7, L8, L9. So 13 total keys you can program. Uh, it has an aluminum casing here on the middle, which looks really good, really looks professional. On the outside, this is plastic here, uh, but overall the quality is really good. It is kind of a thick keyboard. Uh, but not too bad overall. Um, on the bot bottom side, you've got your kickstand, so you can have it up in the air a little bit, and it also has drain holes. Uh, obviously, let's see here, that's a screw hole here where my thumb is, but that's a drain hole, drain hole, uh, drain hole, drain hole. So, uh, it doesn't say anything about being waterproof that I saw. However, if you did spill something on it, it looks like it will allow it to drain at least. It has two modes overall. It has these buttons over here. It says uh, M1 and M2. That lets you cycle between the modes. Uh, all that does is basically mode one. You can have a separate color. Like if I press M1 right now, it's going to go to all white because that's what I usually keep it on. Is M1. Um, so one, it saves your color layouts, uh, but it also you can have different settings for the programmable keys over here, and even your normal keys can be programmed to do different things. And the mode cycles between the two. Uh, it also can affect the breathing and the, uh, the intensity. Another example, if you watch the logo, I'm in mode 1 right now. If I go to mode 2, it goes to 100% intensity. I actually keep it at 30. So again, I'm going to bring it back to 1. Um, it is wired, and it uses a 1.8 meter USB cord. Uh, again, with the quality, this is a braided USB cord. Uh, absolutely amazing quality for this thing. Uh, I love the quality, I love the braid. The braid helps it from getting tangled up, it doesn't allow it to get tangled, it doesn't also stick to other things uh, on your desk or other wires as well. So the braid is awesome. Uh, it says in on the box and on the listing, it can have up to 19 simultaneous key presses to prevent ghosting. Uh, those that play some games that are, are really into intensive gaming, possibly MMOs and even some first person shooters, uh, I, I used to have a keyboard that limited me to three. If I pressed any more than three keys, the fourth one would not be recognized. This keyboard says it does up to 19 simultaneous presses. So you could hold shift, control, alt, and while you're doing that, still press W, S, and D, and, and do all kinds of different things and really move around and do multiple different things. So uh, that's a pretty cool uh, feature. Uh, now I'm going to jump into the actual software and show you how to change some of the settings because that was a more confusing uh, step for me. In the software, you have two different game modes. Game mode 1, game mode 2. These match up with the M buttons I showed you earlier. So game mode 1, if we look at colors, then we can cycle through and change all kinds of different colors for them. Now how these work is this says region A, which is the left region over here. Region A uh, right now has these different colors. So seven different colors assigned to it. And you can make these any color you want. So um, Let's see, I'm actually going to switch to game mode 2 so I can change these around a little bit for me. Uh, you can do it on game mode 1, but I use that one, so right now I don't want to change it. Uh, so region A, it's going to cycle between red, green, blue, purple, and so on. And it'll actually cycle uh, by me pressing buttons on the keyboard, which I'll show you in a minute. But let's say instead of red, green, blue, uh, we want it to, maybe we want black first of all so that it's off. Because um, there's not a way to actually turn it off unless you do it in the software. So a way that I can cycle through... Uh, I'll do black. Uh, so the first one's black, and then maybe we want to do white. So I'll change all these to 255 because that's the max, and it'll show white up there. So click OK. So black, white, and now we want red. So you can click over here and get pretty close to red. That's your current color now. Uh, so as long as you click OK, that'll be your color. So how this is going to work is as we cycle through region A, it's going to go black, white, red, purple, and so on and so forth. 
Um, same with region B and C. Uh, so after green, we'll just make this one black too, just, just to show you an example. All right, so that one's black as well. Uh, you can change the light intensity <clears throat> from 100% down to 70 to 30 to off if you wanted to change that, and the logo intensity from, again, 100, 70, 30, or off. Um, in my main one, I keep this at 30 because I don't necessarily want it to be so bright, uh, but I'll leave it at 100 for now just so you can see it. Breathing effect on and off, we'll change that in a minute. For now, we'll leave it off, but you can change the timing of it as well. Uh, I'll do that here in a second. So we're going to click OK to that. Now how this works is once you click Apply, it's going to take a second for it to actually download to the keyboard. So we'll click Apply, and this little waiting symbol comes up. Uh, the waiting symbol says that it's basically downloading it from the computer to the keyboard. Once it's done with that symbol, I've found that everything should be on the keyboard, and it should be good to go. And once it is done, uh, we'll switch back to the keyboard here, and I will actually show you as I cycle through the colors and how to cycle through the colors. Because uh, again, it, it took me a little while to figure that out. So now I'm going to switch back down to the keyboard. All right, make sure we're on mode two because that's the one that we actually save those settings for. So we're going to hit mode two, and over here it's a mode one two light. Uh, green means mode two, red means mode one. So we're going to go to mode two. <clears throat> you can see over here our first color is black or no color at all. Uh, so it is working. Now to cycle through, we're actually going to hold the function button down here, and then we're going to use. F9, which below it says color one. Color one's region one. So as we cycle through, it should go to white, and it did, and then it'll go to red, then purple, well, it's kind of like an orangish, then purple, light blue, yellow, and then it's gonna go back to white. So it works perfectly. Region B starts off in green, then it'll go to black, purple, blue, yellow, white, red. So as you can see, those work. It's very quick, flawless. You just cycle through. Now, if I have this on, right now it's on red and red, if I switch to mode one, it'll actually save that for when I go back to mode two. It still shows red and red for region one and two. So, great feature. We're going to go back into the software now. And here in the software, we're still under mode two. We're going to change it uh, to breathing. We'll just do a six second, hit OK, and apply. Again, wait for it. Okay, once you've applied that and that symbol is done, you'll actually see the keyboard now is breathing it gives a breathing effect the lights come on and then they fade off and then they come back on uh, so if you're into that kind of thing it's an awesome effect it's not hard to do and again you can still change all the colors to however you would want and, and those will save as well and it'll continue to breathe so we're going to go back into the software now and in the software we have macro settings so once we go into the macro settings you can change just about anything you want in game mode one i've already got a couple set up here uh, so, for instance, if we look at uh, G1, um, which is the button over here, if we look at G1, it's assigned, I just called it Alt. G2, I called it Windows key. That's my name for it. G4 is assigned to the default, and, and I made a couple of these do something as well. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do G3. So, G3, uh, you've got different options from multimedia to Windows options, uh, or you can do the standard, which is the default, uh, assign a shortcut or just turn the key off altogether. But we're going to assign a macro. So we've already named these, or I have. Now macro manager we're going to go into, and we're going to name a new one. So we're just going to call new, and we're going to call just review test. Uh, it's just easy to see and easy to call it something. So now under review test, uh, we're going to click out, and now key sequence. It shows nothing's there right now. So we're going to uh, do a key sequence. We'll just uh, type the word test, and then space. So start sequence, start recording, T, E, S, T, and I'm just pressing them on the keyboard, space one time, and I'm going to hit stop recording. And just for fun, for the example, we'll say loop, we're going to have that loop three times. So when we press the G, uh, when we assign that to the G3, and then press the G3 key, it's going to type test, and put a space, and it's going to do that three different times. So we're going to click OK here, uh, we've already named it. Uh, G3, we're going to go in here and assign macro, review test, and we're going to click apply and wait for it. Uh, once the busy signal is the little loading symbol is done, it'll be downloaded to the keyboard and I'll show you the rest. Okay, it has downloaded it to the keyboard and now I'm going to pull up uh, notepad and we'll click in here so we're typing. Now all we do is if I press the G3 button on the keyboard right here, so I'm going to press it once and then when I press it you'll notice it typed 
test three times in the notepad. Again, I'm gonna press the, I'm gonna hit enter once to go down. I'm gonna press G3 again, and that's our macro. So very easy to set it up, and just about anything can go in there. Uh, multiple keys at the same time. You can hold shift, control, and type something, or, or really just about anything. Very, very easy to customize that. Uh, so it's an awesome setting, especially if you do any kind of video gaming. Under advanced, uh, you've got different polling rates you can assign it. It comes on a thousand. I left it. Key response time, I didn't notice a difference between one or eight. Uh, I just set it on two and left it. And Windows key setting, you can actually stop the Windows key from activating, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you have a game where that's something you want to use and maybe the game triggers it in Windows, it's a way you can disable it from being uh, triggered. Um, now for each game mode, you can save four different profiles, I believe. It could be the profile it works for both game modes, I'm not really sure. But four different profiles you can save stuff in, um, so you can load them for different games. Uh, and then in the update and support tab, you have the driver download, and you can also update the firmware if there is a firmware update for it. Okay, so there is uh, a little mix-up, and this is one of my negatives for it. Now if you look up here, it shows L1, L2, L3, all the way to L9, so L1 through L9. On the keyboard itself, it shows L5, 4, 3, 2, 1, then goes to L6, 7, 8, 9. So it doesn't count straight up. It actually starts at 5 there, and then it counts up to 1, or correction, it counts down to 1, and then 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, now on the actual software, L1 uh, is not this L1. L1 matches up with the keyboard's L1, which is actually this one. So L1 test here, if I press this key, it activates that. Um, so there's a little mix-up in the software there. It's really not a big deal. Uh, so in, in summary, some of the pros for it. The color changing. RGB, you can change it to just about any color you could possibly want. When you, we, you go through that box, uh, any color you could want, you can change it to. Uh, you can adjust the intensity if you want to change the brightness. Uh, very, very thorough software. The software is great. It's something where you can go in here and you can really customize the software to your liking. Uh, you can change the macros or the colors or anything, and it's very easy to do. The only real complaint there is there's a little delay when you're applying it and it's downloading it to the keyboard. Uh, the programmable keys, having 13 to them, that's awesome. I mean, it's great for gaming, great for assigning macros, no complaints. Uh, very well made and braided cable. Uh, really, overall, the, key the keyboard's really well made. Uh, the keys are very quiet. When you type, they're not very loud. I consider that a plus. I, I don't mind that at all. I don't need it to be loud. Half the time I have headphones on anyways, so the sound doesn't bother me. Uh, but quiet, great. And really the cons. The programmable keys don't light up. These up here do not light up, and these to the side do not light up. So everything else does, uh, but those do not. Um, it, it appears there is some backlighting under them, but they don't actually light up. Uh, I'll try to get really close and see if you can see. But there is backlighting under them, but the actual the numbers and letters don't light up. So I'd, I'd consider that a negative as well. Uh, but overall, a very, very good keyboard. Uh, very few complaints on it. I would highly recommend buying this uh, for $50. I don't think you can really go wrong. And again, I would definitely highly recommend it.